hello hello yeah looks like it so, so hey uh seems like just the two of us at least for now falco was asking if i had sent out an invite for today's meeting i just sent him the link to the archive oh there's one more hello Hello, Mona. Hi. Hey, mm. how are you doing? I'm doing good, thank you. Okay. Um, I think if Falco wants to, or is able to join, he will. Too. So, and dear Mia, since you're um, you're about to leave early, uh, let's let's get started. So, um, I think not much has changed on the document, I'm afraid, and uh, I'm sorry for that. Given the current situation, it's a uh, there's a lot going on at work, and uh, I haven't had time to to visit the document. But um, I noted after our call, I noted down a few uh, things in the section. So I put my action item. I applied roughly the structure of the primer from cloud events. That is starting with the history, the design goals section, and um, then this processing models is something specific to the workflows uh, and specification design. And then also having a glossary, like a definition of things, uh, I think, yeah, we've had that in the last version as well. And I closed a few of the discussion points. Uh, I also added a little bit of um, suggested text, um, but we still have a lot open. And maybe let's touch on one or two points now and then uh, try to fill the document with more, more text about it. Can you see my screen? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I can say. Okay. Yeah. Cool, great. So we had one question uh, by Scott Nichols, uh, who was asking, so why why serverless? What does the workflow, what makes it serverless? Mm -hmm. And I, I really wanted to touch on this one because I had a, a few doubts myself. So I know we would want to use the workflow specification language to orchestrate serverless functions, for example, lambdas or uh, serverless microservices that would scale to zero and are uh, known maybe by a callback endpoint. And then there is, of course, uh, the functions as a service concept on its own, where you just identify the function and leave the rest to the platform. That is from pulling the source, building the binary, or loading it in a runtime, just in time compiler, until executing the actual hook. Um, and an early version of the design specification said that function invocation was not part of the workflow specification group. So because maybe because there are so many different ways of how we do it. Um, but at some point, I think, Tiomir, in your blog post that you shared in the serverless working group, you also mentioned that we are orchestrating event-driven functions. And I wonder if that is something specific to serverless workflows. So why, why would you think that the workflow here is that we specify as serverless? Mm. Is it because, because we adopt cloud events, maybe? I think this is something we could put. Well, but then we I'm already got we got pulled back as, uh, by Scott saying, hey, hey, cloud events is not about serverless. It's cloud events. <laughs> yeah, cloud events is just a format. That's it. The specification is small and <laughs> compared to what we're doing, it's tiny, actually. Yeah. Uh, it just specifies the format, unified format of, of events. Mm -hmm. uh, what we're doing, the, we cannot, what makes it serverless? Well, it depends. What is serverless? It's, you deploy, you know, microservices or services, they're loosely coupled. Uh, they're driven by events. So we have event-driven applications, whether they're, and that is kind of like the core of serverless computing by itself. Uh, 
can you do event driven applications outside of a cloud environment? Yeah, so mm -hmm. it doesn't make it any different. Um, we cannot control where our services are deployed, that we're orchestrating or how they're deployed. We're defining a way to or orchestrate uh, the, their invocation. Mm -hmm. now, functions by themselves can be event driven or applications or, or, or an event can trigger multiple invocations of some sort mm -hmm. of services. And that's exactly what we're orchestrating. We're offloading um, event definitions off of serverless uh, or not event uh, uh, services, yeah. Yeah, I would just argue that any work, so one aspect of serverless to me at least is of course not ma having to manage servers, but then I find that to be true with all workflow engines that I've come across. Um, yeah, you can manage events uh, outside of serverless and that's something we've been doing, for example, it might work for uh, over 10 years. Events can be, for example, anything, Kafka events, anything. This is about deployment, really. And what makes us serverless is, is more than just what it does. We can argue that the JSON and YAML formats are more suited for serverless. Um, but then again, you see even SAP is starting to use BPMN2 for serverless uh, orchestration. Oh. And BPMN2 itself has absolutely nothing to do with serverless itself, you know? So as far as what, why we have to say we're serverless workflow, we are assuming that the majority or the, 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 the default definition of a serverless application is an event driven loosely coupled micro, uh, event driven loosely coupled microservices and the way we're structuring our workflow to s basically uh, be able to mm -hmm. um, act upon events and simply do not define, for example, in a lot of workflow engines, you define uh, a lot of the executions. And we don't. We basically say, here is your action. Here is a function that can live anywhere, uh, live everywhere. You have a URL to it. Uh, and that's it. So it's a little different approach than, than the traditional workflows. So how about those function invocations? I think what we are adopting here, or at least in the examples, there is a mention of the URN or AR. Is it, is it an ARN example or something similar where we... Yeah, it's an ARN, yeah. Yeah, that's the Amazon resource name, right? And so this is, um, it's a virtual endpoint. It's not a URL, it's not a location. So this is location transparent, that's okay. Um, yet we are still, so we're doing, oh, we're, at least what it, what it looks like is um, a synchronous invocation or maybe, okay, if synchronous is something transport and process specific then let's say this is um, it's a request response model so right so it's not really event driven or could i send an event to a function and pick up the result from uh, a bucket so i, th I think there is no such yeah this we, would be specific action, to the invocation right our actions have an action mode parameter which is either sequential or Parallel, I guess. Yeah. I assume. Mm -hmm. So we do support both the sync and async execution of the invocations of the ser uh, remote services. Yeah. Okay, but it's not like sending out events and collecting the results later in the workflow. It's really uh, the the execution of a single. Okay, yeah, that's why we call it state also, right? Um, I don't understand. I mean, you you cannot mix functions and events, I think, in this point. Um, events are events, I mean, and functions are invocations of of some services. I don't, well, maybe I don't understand, sorry. Um. Okay, but the way 
uh, serverless functions would be invoked. They are serverless and at the core of serverless, it's event driven. Then the way to invoke functions would be events. Like you would bind a function to a storage trigger, right? Yeah, like yeah, you... okay, I understand. The, the way uh, we kind of do this, we said from the beginning that the use of workflows in serverless computing is to offload the uh, orchestration logic from business logic, uh, which in this mm -hmm. case, our workflow offloads the event collection and the event triggering from the function itself. Um, where before in the function, you had to uh, define your trigger events. And then what happens when those events are happened? Um, you have now a workflow which consumes these events and then triggers the function for you. The functions themselves or the services, yes, they have to be exposed one way or the other uh, somehow. And that is typically done via this URL, whether that be a uh, REST endpoint or, or whatever that, that might be, or some identifier that is in the system known to be associated with that service invocation. Yeah, so that doesn't change, you know, even if, even if you define uh, events inside of these services, they have to be exposed somehow, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but it couldn't be a, a Kafka topic, for example, as an endpoint of the invocation, or could it? Yes, of course you could. Yes, uh, there has to be some service then that listens to a Kafka endpoint and then whatever event type the Kafka mm -hmm. event is in converts that into a cloud event. So yep. that part we're not concerned of. That part is the part of the serverless provider infrastructure of how to invoke the workflows uh, themselves. We don't. No, I mean really in do the functions. I mean, I mean the functions. Uh, so. Yeah, that could be it. But the, yeah, of course, we have also currently like business processes that are that are listening to a Kafka topic. Yeah. Okay, so do we do we miss something in the uh, how how an act or function is defined? We have the function ref and we have the functions definition at the beginning of the workflow spec. Um, that again, that doesn't say anything about the transport. I w I'm just wondering if I I went ahead and just provided a workflow engine. Somebody has lambdas uh, in Amazon and has Azure functions and Cloud One, whatever. There is a way of how these would these serverless functions would be invoked, but I'm not sure how to tell the engine how I want them to be invoked. You know what I mean? So I don't want the engine to download the AIN, the function. I just want it to, to invoke it with Amazon. Yeah, and the, the, the way, <coughs> You can implement it in many ways. You can define the resource and the type. So for example, for implementations, we provided the type parameter where yep. we left it open-ended for the implementations to say, okay, uh, the resource, resource might be um, the name of a Kafka topic and the type might be Kafka for one function, for another function, Okay. The resource yeah. might be a URL and the type might be REST. So mm -hmm. we're kind of open-ended on that. <laughs> there could be yeah. some improvements, but I think it's kind of like... Okay, no, I mean, I it, 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 it's good. It's a lot of flexibility on this end. So one could go ahead and say, okay, the type is JavaScript and then uh, just refer to a JavaScript URL. Yeah, exactly. I guess what we are... Hi, Falco. Oh, this, uh, yeah, hi, guys. Sorry for being late. <laughs> um, what we could say as a smallest common denominator is that in, uh, in our realm, a function invocation is something identified by a URI, maybe even, if it's not a location, but just a name, is the URI maybe the you know, some identifier, that's what we have there. And um, it, from our perspective, it receives, it, it receives and returns JSON. 
whether that is later translated to something else might be implementation specific, but from our language, the protocol, the data model we speak is JSON, right? Well, yeah, the, the, the parameters to, to an action are, have to be defined as JSON, yeah. Well, well yeah, All right. that's, that's just encoding, isn't it? Right. So it's a tree-based encoding format. I could encode the same data structure as XML or YAML. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but in order to define the niche, we, sh we could say JSON is what we are having as at least as a programming model, so to say. If people implement that internally in some different way, that's fine. But like the model of thinking and what is discussed is always JSON. Am I right? Or am I missing something? Is JSON left uh, open I, as well? Can I use XML with this language as well? Um, I. I think yes. Yeah. So th because this is not um, specified and this is an, an open, it's it's not really an issue. It's a, just at this, at there the specification doesn't go any further, and it's in line with the original idea that the workflow specification is only specifying the the business logic, and is yet yes it is offloading these specifics to the platform that implements. Um, the the workflow language and it's also open to the platform how it then implements it and if you again my example like if you had a platform that only deals with JavaScript functions pulls them into a node and um, node VM and executes those it's also a function as a service sort of you can build mm -hmm. workflows for that or you could have the Knative um, services being invoked um, with Istio that would be the with the serving component of Knative that would be your HTTP callback uh, request response pattern or if you uh, employ Knative eventing and the guys are currently working on this sync binding and so on then this would be uh, purely event driven and in that case there is I don't have to tell you how many different adaptations are there for, for simple events, messages. Uh, we had this example with Kafka. So then the type of the function would simply be okay, uh, Kafka. And th there wouldn't be a URI, but it would be a Kafka topic name, probably. And mm -hmm. maybe there needs to be, in that special case, there also need to be extensions that would specify uh, the Kafka brokers and so on. A li mm -hmm. little bit similar to all the adaptations of cloud events. This would be an adaptation of the workflow specification to different function invocation formats, sort of. Mm -hmm. I, I look at that. I just wasn't clear on what to write here because we also got this comment from Scott. Um, what the work? What makes the serverless workflow serverless? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for for like Azure Logic Apps, it would be, for example, just like what they have the name of an action. You know, so it would be just a string. So depending on the implementation, it could be anything. But wait a second, before we continue, can I ask, because I haven't seen Mona around yet, can you introduce yourself just to know who you are and so we can greet you properly? Yeah, sure. <laughs> so I, uh, I'm a software architect at uh, Accenture and uh, I have 12 years of experience. Um, my background was mainly in the Java sphere, but uh, since uh, 2016, I'm interested in containers and uh, cloud native stuff. And I started like um, like last year with Kubernetes and I'm interested in getting into uh, the open source because it's really interesting to, to be involved in the community and that's why I'm here just to, to take a look out at what's going on, especially serverless inter interests me the most. So that's why I'm here today. Well, welcome and, and can you. I ask how you got like, if, uh, like, did you get us from the Slack channel or did you, how did, how did you find, because we're like trying to yeah, grow a community, so, so this is great. Yeah, I was browsing GitHub actually and uh, I found your uh, serverless uh, working group because I'm really so interested in, into getting into 
and uh, open source stuff and getting involved in the community. So, um, so I found the working group and I found the, the links to, to, to the meetings and stuff. So I just subscribed myself. <laughs> Well, thank you. And yeah, feel free to contribute and hang around and join every meeting. That'll be great. Yeah, sure. It's my pleasure. Yeah, also welcome for me. Um, Falco, I, sorry, I, I, I thought again about your, your common data format comment. And I think there's something to it because all the data bindings possible in different encodings, although everything is possibly matching everything else it's good to have uh, a key format uh, mm -hmm. from which to everything else is derived and jason is probably not the I'm most wrong, yep. but aren't we saying at the very beginning that w what starts our workflow is a single json document maybe that has been changed through all the pull requests flying by but um <laughs> Mm, yeah, this, the, the implementation says many, a couple of things. Uh, the workflow has a data input, and yes, it is JSON format currently as defined. A workflow can also be started uh, with a start event state via events. An event, a cloud events uh, define the data and uh, uh, a section, which also we have to state and we haven't yet but we cannot consume every type of data from the cloud events. And that's something that I've been trying to do in my free time uh, because uh, cloud events format defines a, a data content type and also has a two context uh, parameters. One is data, one is uh, data ba underscore base 64. We have to be clear that for workflow, we can only consume cloud events where the data format is type JSON currently. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that sounds like we are defining a uh, proper niche in where things are not contradicting it themselves. So then, yeah, I guess we, that also will then be valid for function invocations, unless we would have a function invocation where we could then have a cloud event as input output. But um, I mean, that would again require JSON as a data format. Yeah, we, 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 we can say JSON, however, there is a difference between, uh, now of course, the data of the cloud event can, has to be JSON uh, format, but for example, it can have a parameter that has a binary string, right? So we're not restricting us to 100% pure JSON, we're just saying the context type of the data format of the cloud event has to be type JSON for us to be able to merge it with uh, the state data or the workflow data, which is JSON itself. Mm -hmm. So there has to be some sort of, you know, so we're not fully restricting ourselves to 100% JSON, but yeah, there is a restriction. Yeah. And yeah, the, what, the only thing I want is that with these assumptions are written down clearly to the readers. Yeah, yeah definitely. That's really good. Yeah, it's a benefit. And it's, it's definitely going to be the wrapping format. I mean, I am. Um, we're not going to define a workflow where we pass on JPEGs. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, we can. The the the. No, no, yeah. no, no. But but the JPEG would still be base sixty four encoded in a parameter in our JSON. Uh, yeah, yeah. Or a URL thing. to a JPEG that lives some, somewhere. Yeah. That's also as well. Uh, the only restriction we can say is like, look, the the data format of the internal data structure of our workflow definition is JSON. So whatever it wants to be consumed as far as merged into the data of the state that I input that output and, and being and to be able to be filtered has to conform to the same format. Um, yeah. Other than that, we can deal with it. Uh, and that's it. So also I think our um, filters, everything that where we extract the path or we define, uh, select the path for merging data and so everything is JSON pass, right? Yeah, and Falco last time mentioned that probably is not a good idea, but we'll take, I have been looking, Falco, I can tell you, into using a single expression language. That is a very good idea you had. And I've been talking to, and, and you know, Edson and, and those guys mm -hmm. here about using feel. Uh, 
all they all say that that the field has some sort of current restrictions as far as what it can do or not. So maybe in a separate meeting, you and I can talk about it to see if we can uh, go ahead and use that as the single expression language that we force kind of uh, in order to promote vendor being vendor neutral, I guess, or, or I don't know what you call it anymore. I'm sorry. Mm. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. And yeah, yeah, so that's a separate discussion. But yeah, currently you can say we, in your primary, if you want to about expression languages, we define that, we don't define one, but we also don't restrict to a single one. Mm -hmm. And that um, kills any operability. And in DMM, yeah. we had big success in uh, having real interoperability of DMN models because we do have a standardized expression language. And maybe some things are still missing for our use case. Um, some things could be improved, but the foundation is at least a lot better than this blog post that introduced JSON path and the leaves kind of any more complex operation to some underlying scripting language that is not closely specified. Yeah, so yeah, definitely. Let's take that as an issue item and work on it to improve. But blog posts, you mean TMS blog posts or? No, um, JSON path has been oh, that one. Yeah, defined yeah. by Yeah, some, by a blog post, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. If, you, if you look for JSON path, it's the first I know, thing I know. And I'm not sure if, that, what, if there was any experiment to ever standardize that, but okay. in its current form, I think it's kind of, any implementation is somewhat proprietary. There are some common parts that you can probably do similar in, in every implementation, but then, those comments parts are relatively thin. It's mostly uh, regulating data access of photo access properties and do some path magic, but mm. you know, sometimes you need functions in order to work on more complex structures like lists or, yeah. Yeah, and then, then it gets tricky. Well, you can blow up an engine with, uh, if you allow one or too many functions, so. Mm -hmm. um, how about it's a conditional expressions? Is that something? Uh, do you, do you know if we can use JSON pass um, for all of our expressions? Yeah, that's exactly the point, right? Uh, you can, the in theory you can, but for anything more complex, you would um, JSON path just says more complex functions could be provided by some other scripting language that is. Yeah. That the implementation is based on. I think the basic implementation is uh, the, the, the basic uh, vision of JSON pass was that it is implemented on some on top of a scripting language, like for example, mm -hmm. JavaScript. And then you could leverage any functions that your scripting language provides. Oh, okay. But I guess we wouldn't want to have a hard binding against something like JavaScript even though it's a language that is available on many platforms, it's also, the problem is that it's a Turing complete language and you don't want to have full programming language skills inside your expression language. Yeah. That's what the services and the functions are for. So what was, uh, just to make a note to myself, uh, what was your suggested language? It was feel, right? Yeah, feel, F-E-E-L, like the word feel. And that's part of the DMN specification by the OMG. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's something to work with. Um, and I guess this whole discussion should have been recorded one. and put into the document. <laughs> um, maybe I can take that as an action item to... Um, Speaking of which, how can we download recordings? Um, okay. Do we need to contact Doc for this? Is this room is being yes. recorded and the, I think it's using, I, I'm guessing it's using cloud recording, but available only to the account owner, so. Yeah, and well, how was it? There was also some stuff appearing on YouTube. Not sure if that's automatic or if that is something that Doug does after meetings. Yeah, probably after the meetings. Um, there is, uh, there is a recording button, but that's please request recording permission from the mm -hmm. meeting host. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Best is to uh, talk to Doug because it's his meeting. Yeah. 
in Zoom, he should receive okay. an email or maybe he has something automated to catch the recordings and push them to YouTube. Uh, so, Jeremy, I don't know how we are uh, in, in time. You mentioned that you have to, you have something to attend to. So, um, yeah, I was cool, but uh, school is out, so I got all the time you need. Oh, okay. <laughs> they, came, they closed all the schools. Oh, okay. wow. I wasn't following it that closely for the US. Same here. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, stateful, I, I also had this, this other one stateful versus stateless. Um, I think we touched on it the last time a little bit. Um, oh, yeah, maybe let's go through, the, through this slowly if we have a little bit more time. So for the for workflow concepts, I think I, um, I, I'm, I'm okay with saying that, or would you agree that the quintessence of what we've been discussing is that serverless workflow language is serverless because we use formats and we adopt the cloud event specification formats that are common in the serverless space. Cloud event specification, we adopt to this, we define our triggers with it. And um, last but not least, something about the function invocation, but I'm not conclusive on that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also have a feeling that this, some stuff is still like fuzzy there. So maybe in summary, one could argue that we are somehow using the commonly used objects of serverless frameworks. And this for somehow seems to be functions that are identified by some kind of name, URI, something like that. I guess this, the really common ground is just a string, but maybe we could at least give some examples as you did here. And um, well, drilling down like the three things is probably events, functions, and JSON as a programming model. Yeah. So that is, okay, there's four programming. Um, so we're at least in the same um, declaration language space, but how about that workflow context? Um, so by context, sorry, by context, I mean, um, yes, a JSON data structure starts the workflow execution. And in between, we're also working with um, the JSON data structure. So this is the, the context attribute. Mm. Yeah. I think, yeah, that's okay. For the function invocation, I, ju I just leave it open. Uh, if anybody has any ideas, I mean, I, I have plenty of ideas of how to Im uh, interpret serverless, but I think that's not the roots of this. So you could you could have the, the entire workflow execution be serverless, uh, but the language makes no assumptions about that, right? So, but I mean, I don't think we have to focus on this world serverless, yeah. who cares? Nobody else does. If you look at any other serverless, quote unquote, workflow implementation out there, nobody describes why. It just is. Yeah. Um, even like I said, I said earlier, and, 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 and Falco, you will be happy about that. You probably know SAP now uses BPM2 as well. What's serverless about that? Nothing. You know what I mean? And as far as us, the only thing we have to describe, like I said, is we're orchestrating an event driven application loosely coupled applications and that's all it matters honestly can you use serverless workflow outside of serverless yes of course and and we allow for other state other than event states to be starting states of the workflow so you can use our definitions to describe workflows that don't even deal with event driven architecture mm -hmm. so we're not forced our name is because what we're trying to do with this specification is unify um, workflows that are running in serverless orchestra, uh, the model of them, they're running currently in serverless, that, that, whether that be whatever they might be. Um, so we're, that's kind of like our business. Our business is how this serverless event uh, architectures are defined or, or what kind of services they provide that we cannot go there, you know? Mm -hmm. 
then I already pulled part of what we discussed into function orchestration because I think um, the details about how we invoke functions uh, that this is really about what it is that the workflow language is supposed to orchestrate. I know that we can emit events and we can consume events. Uh, we can also be triggered by events um, but I think core of all this is to orchestrate um, processing uh, that goes on elsewhere and then is, is somewhat serverless, right? So I wouldn't create a work, serverless workflow just to do some data manipulation without any invocation. I mean, I could do it without invoking any extra, any other function, but I think the core of this is to, to orchestrate um, these, these in functions, right? Function invocations. Would you agree? That, Yeah, I mean, the core of, of what? Sorry. Of, of the workflow language. So it's to orchestrate function invocations. Um, is, that, is that a sentence well, that you would subscribe to? I mean, yeah, defining what orchestration is would be also a nice thing to have. Basically, meaning, and that goes to, those, to, to why do we need workflows in the first place? And the main reason is, is to separate, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the separation of business logic, which our functions or services need to focus on versus the quote unquote orchestration, which is everything else, which is control flow logic, data management, event management, uh, execution, uh, semantics or execution definitions. So we're offloading you can write all this stuff without workflows, you know, and that people mm -hmm. have been doing it. So why do we care about workflows is because of the separation of uh, demands. You know, what do, what are we taking care of inside of repeatable, reusable, uh, you know, graphic, you can graph the, the, the structure of it, of these workflows, uh, mm -hmm. what we are offloading from actual or business logic, which is our services that need to focus on, on specific things and that are business oriented only. The, 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 the actual problem of our business, you know, business problem. Okay. So, um, graphing, you mean the notation, right? Well, yeah, I mean, whether you use toolings or not, these workflows are one way or the other presentable in um, a readable and understandable structure, whether they're reading the JSON from top to bottom or mm -hmm. in case okay. of unreadable markup in yep. terms of like some sort of yeah, model, oh, okay, graphical okay, model. Mm -hmm. So control flow, uh, I get it. It's our state data management. Um, not so sure about the data management. So event management, yeah, defining the triggers or emitting triggers, Work. execution semantics, that's adapting. Data management is what goes into the context and what is being used to invoke a function, right? Well, that, data management, is, as far as uh, workflow orchestration goes, is uh, within functions, when you write your single function, which is supposed to target, um, solving a single business requirement, right? Uh, if without data management, you have to know uh, the data inputs, the data outputs, mm -hmm. everything from all the other services that might be triggering after, or, or there might be, you have to know all of that in order to solve some sort of particular business problem. Workflow offload off of that. Mm -hmm. In workflows, you define the parameters to your functions. And in workflows define how the results of this particular functions are being handled as well, right? So as far as then your function coding goes in your service, you don't have to worry about any of that. You just have to focus on what data do you need and what you need to do with that data, right? And you don't have to worry about the big picture, which is offloaded okay. to the workflow. So this is somewhat uh, holistic. Yeah, that's okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that's something we can ex explain the function orchestration that is addressed by serverless workflow language. And yeah, there are 
portability, um, I actually, I don't wanna go down this right now. I just copy and paste it because it's one of the goals. Uh, since the workflow specification doesn't make a lot of assumptions on the impl actual implementation of, of functions or the engine, um, I think it's really hard to state portability. Uh, but that's just an opinion right now. So maybe we we can pick up on that later. What do you mean portability? Can you just explain? Yeah, oh, oh yeah. Um, Good question. Uh, this facilitates serverless workflow portability is one of the goals of the serverless workflow uh, specification language, right? So it's to make the workflow description portable between engines, so that one engine could be entirely designed to invoke um, ARNs and the other engine could be entirely designed to uh, communicate with Knative services through Kafka topics. Um, I yeah. But, yeah, I mean, the, 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 we're only looking at portability on the, on the model level. And, you know, there's going to be, <laughs> no matter what, there's going to be differences in implementations. But what we're trying to do is to minimize those, right? What you're talking about, I don't think that's something feasible in a real world to do, because if I port my serverless workflows from AWS to Microsoft, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to have to change things. But the difference is, is this changing these strings rather than having to change my whole workflow definition, right? Yeah. So yeah. I don't so know. So at the current stage, we could say portability um, to the extent possible for the orchestration part. Uh, limitations, known limitations currently uh, with what we have right now is the expression language and the concrete function binding, mm -hmm. where vendors will have to extend the language to get something working. If we fix the expression language, we could get to a stage where if you have functions of the same signatures, you could in theory take a model and run it on a different platform given you provide those same functions with, um, you know, same signatures. Maybe they still have different names that would be, would need to be mapped, but um, yeah. That's realistic. And then of course for the cloud events, there's a similar thing, right? I mean, we have the data models in there, we can we fix it to JSON but then of course also wherever these events are coming from the, the signatures or the data structures have to match what the process expects. And I think cloud events is, um, is going in the right direction with the mm -hmm. discovery and subscription. Um, mm -hmm. that, yeah, that could be an additional help here. Yeah, because if if you have an event type, uh, I think there is a known uh, format. I I don't know if they specify or they, if they allow for specifications of the content, except for the encoding. So that along with the event registry, that you would also register which fields of the event are uh, mandatory, optional. I think uh, in in the in the body of the event. I don't think this is currently happening, but I'm not sure. So registration is something ongoing in the Cloud Events group. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think that's okay for the, to explain these two goals, what is meant and ex actually what is not meant. So not touching on function bindings and uh, leaving the expression language open for now, although this is more of a comment thing, right? Because this is work in progress. It's not a, it's neither a goal nor a non-goal to define a common expression language or not. It's just, we haven't decided on this, but it seems for the function bindings, at least for now, this is, because it was also in the original design document, this is something that this specification would not cover and that is good because mm -hmm. it's exhaustive. Then let's make that clear here, that expression language could be something that is scoped smaller 
function bindings, we all seem to agree that this is something that needs to be left open for vendor extensions. Yeah. And well, to the expression language, there are pros and cons. On the one hand, we are narrowing the, the possible applications, but we would also increase portability. And that was a similar discussion in DMN as well. Um, while the specification leaves it open, most vendors then settled on, on feel as an expression language. I think we at Kamunda were one of the only ones that supported a whole portfolio of different expression and scripting languages. And, but we're slowly also circling in on feel because it gives us this fixed expression language to work with. But yeah, different discussion. Yep. Maybe we should put a, an agenda item here or a, or a table of contents item on the expression language discussion. Um, we may like an action item on the table of or table of contents uh, item. Yeah, it it, it should probably be a chapter in this document to to have this debate and explain the current outcome. Would you rather see this? Because this, I think, is um, the concepts. And to me, it, uh, the expression language discussion, giving specific examples, naming existing languages and so on, is something more of the, um, the actual realization. So something in the specification design, right? So it's maybe specification mm -hmm. design, should we have a, an expression language sub point here. Mm -hmm. I think that could make sense. Do you mean I you have agree? some copy paste content that I could provide for that because we recently made that exercise of cool. discussing which expression language to use in our engine. It's a little bit the data. So I'm not sure if data transformation may be the expression language. It, I mean, yeah, we got to see if this field, I wouldn't put any specific name of any uh, expression language down now because we still have to evaluate what, if we can use this field or not. It has a lot of restrictions um, compared to some other ones out there. But I would definitely say yeah, a single expression language for, to enforce like portability or whatever. I mean, nothing wrong with naming it as a candidate, but still making clear that this decision is not final yet, or that it's yeah. not a decision at all. It's just a candidate that we could look at. Yeah. Just to express to the TOC that we are not like blind on this topic, but we have had some initial research of what the world looks like. I like this term um, that you that you said the other day, Manuel. That we are like measuring the world or you know, that the cloud events team measured the world before they started their specification. And I would assume if the TOC wants uh, is, is to adopt this, that they want us to, to have a certain measurement of the world done as, as well. I said, we need to show a little bit of activism. We can't make uh, measure the, the world actually. But since we got that comment that we should also cover Tecton and uh, because we are originated from AWS Lambda. This is a Netflix conductor. I think Tiume, you suggested we cover this. This is just, we need to show something. I think the primer shouldn't be all self-concerned and should make these connections to different uh, projects and specifications, right? So that's, yeah, mm. in summary. Um, okay, last one. We're almost at the top of the hour, unless I invited uh, you for one hour and a half, but I don't think so. No, it's just one hour. Um, stateful versus stateless. I, or maybe we can leave it for next time because we only have seven minutes and maybe uh, we can wrap up. Um, but let's give it a try. So stateful versus stateless to me is a, a not making any sense because the workflow has state and it's passed between um, the what we call states to, to make it work. So every workflow, you, you'd probably call it workflow data to me is state of the workflow. Um, I mean, the, the whole, uh... 
the naming already indicates that we are talking about some kind of state. And there might be workflows that are running very quickly and uh, don't need to persist the state for a longer time, but still they will have a state. Yeah. And in my so opinion- what, How would we support stateless uh, service workflow implementations? Does it mean that, no, I, I, I wouldn't even know how the specification, if I support something stateless, then maybe I make um, the persistency of the state transparent so that the, the system takes just care of it. But this is a system design implementation aspect. So this is not something that the specification well, can ensure. This is, this is where we differ ourselves from AWS in a big way, okay? okay. The Amazon state language is a stateless language. What does it mean? It doesn't provide any means for scaling and scaling to zero especially. Just by us using cloud events and using a correlation token allows us to scale to zero, okay? And restart the workflow, for example, when an events actually arrive or the events that we define in our event states, for example, as a starting state to even start the workflow instance, right? Uh, this is where we, <laughs> we are actually a superset of AWS state language right there, okay? Is that the property of the language or just the property of Amazon's implementation? Well, we're talking, the whole thing we're talking about is just the model, right? Our model allows for stateful orchestration because we define a model through which users can model stateful workflows execution, right? Um, if we use just the Amazon state language, there is no way to even model something like what we can because there is no event driven state in the Amazon state language. So just by the means of our workflow definition, uh, being able to use an event state or, or this callback state or whatever, and the other states that we have or not, we support both. So it's just a feature of the language, it's uh, the model itself rather than, than anything else. Okay, so that the summary would be the language has weight states. <laughs> yeah, exactly, I mean, what else can you say? But then you have to define a weight state, yes. But yeah, in short, we allow for uh, we know that in server, serverless environments, we have two things, right? Uh, well, a different pricing model, but scaling is very important. And our language allows, uh, to, allows users to write workflow definitions that can scale. Um, but I'd argue that Amazon step functions is scalable as well. So you can have multiple invocations of your workflow uh, and it would scale just like yeah, Lambda. yeah. But they, that that is done versus other Amazon services, right? That is okay. not itself defined, uh, uh, shown in the model itself. I suggest we don't argue too much with Amazon here, but then say something like the language supports asynchronous communication, and therefore it's clear that we have to wait for an asynchronous response to arrive, and we have different language elements that would allow that. Yeah, and, and, and in addition, we also have correlation, right? Where Which certain, is an inherent yeah. capability that you need for asynchronous communication. Yep. Well, well. We could mention that here, yeah, sure. I was thinking the other day whether re-entrant is the right term, but it's probably not. Re-entrant is something where you can, um, yeah, interrupt, right? So it's kind of something you could say here that, like, yeah, you are. I mean, yeah. Asynchronous continuation is a term that uh, that JBPM and some of the other offsprings of that are using, but that's actually used for a different mechanic that's mostly used for some. So what was the word asynchronous? Continuation. Continuation, yeah. But um, it, I think the bottom line is really asynchronous communication. Like the language can has elements that can wait for an asynchronous response or an asynchronous event to come back. And 
that could be, of course, cloud events topics, but um, I don't know, do we allow something? I mean, we have that callback state now, right? So that could be an argument here. Not sure if a normal function invocation qualifies as that. Ideally it should, because um, from a business point of view, um, it happens frequently that business users don't really want to see too many things. Like it would be good from my experience to have a way to hide asynchronous communication behind a single element. Sure, that's a convenience, but sometimes you want to get down to it and explain from, from a business modeling perspective, that's a requirement. Mm -hmm. From a technical argument, you could say, well, who cares? It's maybe just convenience, um, syntactic sugar, if you want. But from a business point of view, uh, that's a requirement. We have had that in, any, in every engine that we ever built. Yeah. Um, okay, I think that finally clarifies what stateful versus stateless means and what this support both stateless and stateful serverless workflow implementations, what that goal defines. Sorry, I could. Yeah. So could a stateful it. workflow would then be a workflow that just limits itself to certain elements that are basically just syn uh, synchronous function calls. You could potentially have something like an initial event that kicks off the workflow, but from then on, you can't wait. You just straight through process everything in one go. Yeah. What's the funny thing about that? And that is why many people always need uh, stateful workflows is what if a function fails? And what if you want to have things like retrying or stopping the workflow right there and then continue later once you fix the problem? So the saga pattern comes into play here and then obviously things like compensation. What if you really have a failure that you need to... You know, no, but that's still, that's still stateless to me by the definition that we just had. So if you define your workflow with retries upfront, uh, there is no interaction with it. It's ju it just retries the action several times. Yeah, yeah. There's that's true. Over handling. Retry is finished. Like what What if you need human intervention once all your retries failed and then later on you wanna continue the workflow based on some manual fix that you did in your infrastructure? That is a stateful workflow, but it's not, mm -hmm. okay, okay. I got misled by when you mentioned retry, sorry, yeah. Mm -hmm. The automatic retries, yes, that is something that you can build in stateless, but um, yeah, the air, basically like, Stateful error handling, keeping the yeah. business transaction in flight, not forcing the users to restart from the beginning of the workflow and then you continue later. All right, that's cool. Um, thanks a lot. Uh, I think we've, we've touched on something. Uh, even though I'm not a good uh, example myself, please, um, whenever you feel like or have time, uh, uh, look at a section, write something, and um, yeah, then should we schedule a call for next week? Yes, please, let's do that. Let's keep up this discussion. Yeah, and just so if, uh, just an update, and I told Manuel, we got a TOC sponsor, and it's not a small one. It's actually the biggest one there is. <laughs> Uh, Microsoft, so we need two more, but I don't think see any problems with that. We're currently under a SIG review, uh, just to kind of explain, because I'm a complete noob about it too until recently. Um, CNCF has these SIGs, uh, specialty interest groups, right? which every proposal has to fall under. The problem with us is that there is no serverless uh, group. And uh, when Cloud Events was made, actually proposed to Sandbox, there was no SIGs. So they just kind of reviewed it themselves. Uh, but right now there is some sort of discussion whether 
uh, serverless should be a SIG on its own or not. The DAG doesn't want to do it because it's extra work, blah, blah, blah. I so thought it is already a SIG. No, no. So we're going to fall under the runtime SIG at CNCF. And they're yeah. going to currently review our pull request. Um, what's this guy? The co-founder of Kubernetes, actually, working at Microsoft, named Brandon, Brandon Burns. Brandon Burns. Yeah. Yep, has uh, raised his hand to sponsor this specification. Uh, what does a sponsor do? Which means absolutely nothing. So they just say they support it and we need support from two more. Uh, we'll figure that out how to get and then uh, we will have to present this somehow to the TOC uh, for some sort of review. And I don't know when that's going to happen. As soon as I know, you will know as well. So it's moving forward um, and we're making some noise. We're making actually a lot of noise and let's keep making noise. That's the only thing we can do and see where it takes us. That's awesome. Um, yeah, speaking in terms of noise, um, Tio, could you give us a little bit more time to review pull requests? Um, no, I'm just kidding. The yes. Things uh, that were flying by today, you saw yourself, there was an error in there and um, this pace is too fast. I admire your your energy, but if you want, if you don't want this to be a one-man specification, then let's please have some. Time. Oh man, you're starting to sound so like somebody else. Yes, of course. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yes, I agree with that. Uh, and yeah, and as far as we 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 did not let our our new uh, person say anything. Oh no, yeah. Yes. Oh no, are you still with us? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, um, I'm still here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah thanks for monitoring our call. Um, yeah, yeah, that was really interesting. I think we, so I'm not sure how far you're up to date with what we're actually doing here. So um, we are trying to write our. Uh, this call was specifically about a primer. There is also a monthly serverless workflow uh, working group meeting. That is every first Monday of the month. Um, we have, uh, I think there is a standing invite. You would find it on the email archive of the CNCF serverless list. Okay. Um, there is also a document link to our workflow meeting minutes. Next event will be on April the 6th. Mm -hmm. And just now I, uh, we, we would plan a follow up to discuss the primer document uh, that we've been discussing for the entire time. Okay. Uh, we should, yeah, give an overview of the specification without going into the normative references of everything. Um, so next week I'm, a little bit more flexible or less flexible considering that the kids are at home too, schools are closed, everything is going to be in lockdown soon, I suspect. So um, what about the time next week? Any preferences? I'm open still, I'm in the lockdown, I'm in I'm Germany actually still, so. Uh, so I am facing the same stuff you, you are facing, so I'm, I'm flexible as well, so, yeah. Well, I mean, also here we, are, we, we have, have a, <laughs> we are going to have a majority here. <laughs> let, let me, let me, let me just wake up. Let's do it after nine o'clock here. So <laughs> plus yep. five, I guess. But I wanted to say there's still an open PR to add finally Manuel as an owner. I think that's very important. Another question for Falco, uh, maybe offline, but I don't see Sal, uh, Mauricio, maybe he's on vacation, but maybe he's looking into other adventures now. So do you want to be replaced as an owner from Camunda? I don't know. You can just let me know. We're flexible. But we need more owners. We need more contributors. We need more people to just look and tell us how crazy we are. And that's mm -hmm. it. I mean, without that, I, I don't know where Kathy is. I, I don't control that. But right now, as far as, you know, your thing, 
out of three owners that we have, I'm the only one that's actually being active. And that's a problem. So let's fix it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will take this uh, offline with uh, Mauricio and see how we can proceed here. I guess that the goal is to have one owner per company, right? Yeah, I mean, that would be nice, uh, of course. But yeah, I, right now what we need is is the exactly exact problem is that we have some rules and regulation, the stupid governance document. We have nobody to enforce it. So if you guys are looking into things like, you know, longer pull requests, reviews, reviews only meetings, the stuff that, you know, other specifications might be doing, we, we, we got to get there. All we, and for that, you know, we got to change our structure and position ourselves the way that we also look as a you know good team you, you know and the best way is to 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 have active people actually be owners of the specification regardless you know okay um regarding the time i looked up so tell you're in atlanta right um and i looked up the time we, looks like we could actually have a meeting at 3 p.m european time I mean, at San Francisco, just to see, hey, at least That's keeping cool. it open for KC. Yeah, that would be 7 a.m. I don't know if they start working that early in San Francisco, but uh, at least we could schedule our next call um, at that time. So that would be next Monday, 23rd. I'll send out invites, 3 p.m. Germany, 10 a.m. Atlanta time. And um, the week after, we anyways, uh, I don't know, I said, yeah, the week after we have our regular one. Oh, no, no, there's one more Monday in, in March. Sorry, sorry about that. Okay. And okay, last last thing, uh, everybody, I think uh, we we can meet next week, but I wanted to ask one more question to me. I missed the beginning of the serverless call. Have you been there or Falco? Have you been there? So the serverless work group meeting. Um, no, I couldn't make it this week or last week. That was right. Yeah. I, I didn't join it either. Lots of European folks missed it because uh, Pacific time switched mm -hmm. to Pacific daylight time. And I missed every year the same. K yeah, <laughs> Casey was there and there was an agenda item that she would give a readout from the workflow subgroup. Uh, which is a standing item, by the way. So I think if to give a readout to the serverless working group, maybe we should join. Um, and uh, yeah, I missed it. So I was just wondering what Casey had to say about what we are doing. I think I had an item on my to-do list to review the core recording and see what was oh, yeah. also the response from the rest of the working group there, right? Especially this that we submitted a TOC pull request that should probably gain some interest over there, right? Yep. Yeah, good point. There are, are recordings, so maybe we can find one. Okay. Thanks, everybody. That was really cool. At least it, it clarified a few questions in my mind. And let's continue next week. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a plan. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.